Okay. Okay, my topic today is God is ready, but are you? God is ready, but are you? Are you ready? Hallelujah. Robert, good plan, man. Good important. Let me go, friend. Thank you. God is ready, but are you? Second Kings chapter 4, verse 7. Turn in Bible. We're going to hang around kings because plenty talk talk law. Anointing this law. Power of law. God is tough law. Second Kings. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 7. Presence of God is tough. This is a place there on fire right now. Hallelujah. Second Kings chapter 4. Verse 1 to 17. Don't take notes yet. You listen to my message after you take notes. Otherwise, you won't, you won't listen to the message. Second Kings 4, verse 1 to 7. Let me read him. Topic belong and talk also widow's oil. You know, I never saw this differently. Holy Spirit, change my blow me, Lord. This is like widow's oil. I never take note of this. Widow's oil. The wife of a nob man, wife of a man from the company of the prophets, cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that he, re he revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. I'm going to read that again. The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that he revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Verse 2. <clears throat> Elisha replied to her, How can I help you? How can I help you? I mean, not talk all the same. You may go and I may go look him this law. Credit table, you know, at least I got favor. I can speak and, and, and by reduce him, this law one him blow you. No, God, this is the, I'm going to read until I finish the whole scripture. Elisha replied to her, how can I help you? And tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all. Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a little oil. Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. That's the key. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons and pour oil into all the jars. And as each is filled, put it to one side. She left him and afterward shut the door behind her and her sons. And they brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, <clears throat> she said to her son, Bring me another one. But he replied, There is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. You and your sons can live on what is left. Another story about a widow again. Last week too, you may look in widow of Zarephath. Now you may look in Narpla widow. I'm not got name Blongen. Okay. Okay. Her husband, man Blongen, he died. He's a God-fearing man. I'm saying save inside all prophets. I'm saying save one time all prophets. So he's a God-fearing man. And now I'm dying now. He left mama. Now Tupla picking in man. Okay. Her husband had some death. I'm got dinner now. Emi got dinner where Emi no buy him. So now the creditor is coming back now to her to take away his two sons so that they can become his slaves. Man, <laughs> she didn't go to, you know, one thing happened here is she didn't go to a policeman. Okay. You, you see what they're doing here? Look, we don't have Sarah Fett too. Emi no go, law, doctor. Uh, the story about Valley of Dry Bones, they didn't go to a doctor and nurse. Last week, la, last week's story about widow of Sarafet, she didn't go to her, she didn't go to anybody else, she went straight to the prophet. Okay, she didn't go to the police or the village council or take the matter to court. They won't consider her situation because she's a widow. Now, I'm not saying I didn't, I'm not saying I recognize him as a widow because all low, low, low. I said, talk all to line. And she went to God's servant, Prophet Elijah. And Prophet Elijah, listen carefully, he asked two questions. <laughs> Prophet asked two questions. Number one, what shall I do for you? What shall I do for you? Number two question, what have you for sale value in the house? This is from Amplified. What have you for sale value in the house? So number one question, what shall I do for you? 
You know what? This is a burden to the widow. A big burden this is for this widow. She doesn't want her sons. I mean, not like him, old man, by coming and kiss him, two people are picking him, young people are picking him, long and gone, but he'll come up slave because they're going to torment them, or by belt him all, or by put him all through the and something, and no mother wants a child to go through that. Huh? So, Amy Kirab, uh, and then the prophet Kirab, they talk all the what shall I do for you? To me, me look him all the he, he's got confidence. Prophet, he got confidence, like one and something is inside of him. Okay, look for 18 to 19. This prophet's confidence was that he has been empowered with the burden removing and yoke destroying power of God. That's why I'm kidding. I talk also, what can I do for you? Because I got the anointing to release you. Can you see that? That's our mission statement. He was confident of, his, of that statement, the spirit of the Lord. Let's go to that. Spirit of, look for, look, turn in my body, come. My presence of God, you know, you see here. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, God. God is in this message, church. Me like him by ear, blood like open. You will be released. Luke chapter 4, 18 to 19. This is our vision statement. The spirit of the Lord is on me. Because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind. He, re he anointed me to release the oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So when the prophet asked, what shall I do for you? He was confident the anointing on me can release you, mama. Anointing that God has placed on me can remove that burden. That worry your life, Lord, that anointing can release you from that. Hallelujah. He had confidence on that. Thank you, God. Amplified version, let me talk all same. This is uh, to release the oppressed. And the Amplified Vision defines it as oppressed is downtrodden, bruised, crushed, broken down by calamity. Let me talk also, anointing but God, he put it upon the prophet's life to release them. In other words, the prophet Elisha is saying, the anointing upon my life can release you from this situation. The anointing is not for not for you only. When the anointing comes on you, it's not only for you. Anointing is not to look good, not, not to look powerful. Anointing is to release people. Anointing God will put on top of you is to release your family members. It's to release, not for you to get up now, fighting for us now and talk me, yeah? God, the anointing, yeah? no, no, no. It's to release people. You got to use it for people who are trapped. Hallelujah. The anointing. Number two question he asked was, what have you for sale value in the house? First question he asked is, what can I do for you? He's telling her, I'm anointed to release you. Number two question, what have you for sale value in the house? In other words, he said, I need seed. I need your seed, the point of contact. That, that seed will unlock your breakthrough. Your breakthrough is locked, but your seed will unlock it. It will unlock your breakthrough. Like Mr. Story Loipla. Holy Spirit kept on putting on my heart to be a partner with Jerry Savelle. But I didn't do it until last year, last year, two years ago. The moment me obeyed and me put him tight, let me go law, Jerry Savelle Ministry International. I saw breakthrough after breakthrough. And that seed was a point of contact for me to break through. So what Elisha was saying is, I need seed. And that seed is the point of contact. That seed will unlock your breakthrough. Okay. And one thing that Elisha did was, he said, go around to your neighbors and borrow empty jars. I'm going to see this from the Amplified. Go around to your neighbors and borrow empty jars. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Go around to your neighbors and borrow empty jars, empty vessels. And he said, not few. And not few. And I be to call them. Don't ask for just few. Now, next advice, Lord, prophet. I'm still doing my back, back, back foundation. And it, next advice he gave was shut the door behind you. When you go, after you go and borrow all the empty jars, don't borrow only few, get plenty, plenty. But the next thing, next instruction he gave was shut the door behind you. You know what that means? Shut the door to negative voices. Shut the door. Devil will be whispering. Why are you doing this? How about, 
How about oil by increase, yeah? Are you long, long, huh? So the devil, because, you know what? While I was reading this, Holy Spirit showed me something. A prophet is a seer. S-double-E-R. A prophet is a seer. Prophets are look, look deep inside the people. So look him. When the prophet looked at this woman, hallelujah, when she, she, she invested, she said, as soon as she said, I have nothing except the oil, same time the prophet got up and said, go around. Let me look him all same. You don't have the capacity. Your capacity is too small to receive what I'm about to pour into your life. He said, your, he, he, he's a, a prophet is a seer. So the prophet is a seer. He has x-ray vision. I, we call him seer x-ray vision. You got x-ray vision. Now. I can look, look, go inside where sick is tablo, one him up below you. So prophet has x-ray vision. And he could see that her capacity was not enough to receive what God was about to do. The outpouring by coming and big platumas. Now you cannot take it. He instructed her to humble herself to go around to all the neighborhood and collect empty vessels. Vessels. And she does not have the capacity inside here. You know what? I'm still going. I'm not going to go ahead of me. She did not prepare for the outpouring. There's going to be an outpouring of God's spirit in this place. And you got to prepare. You got to prepare this life. You see, suppose you're not preparing heart play, you're not preparing your prayer, you're not preparing your talk, you're not preparing your meditation, time outpouring, time, there's going to be floods of people coming through here. All money pining, kai kai turu turu. And if they're, if they're sitting in the churches and they're staying in the well and they're looking around, nothing is happening, only harem radio, we are already exposed to radio. We are exposed to YouTube. And if they hear that there's food in this house, they're going to be running here. Now, usad by pastor in all, you... That's how you got to enlarge the capacity of your heart. Enlarge it. Have space for more. More people are going to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is ready to pour out his spirit. And the oil represents his spirit. You plan on serious. Me look at you plan on serious. Hi. <laughs> time me sit down inside the church now. All pastor let me talk to the Lord. God is about to do an outpouring. Me, I'm to God. I'm here. Pour it on me. I want to be your vessel. Altar call, yeah. Me say go day after day to the altar call. God, only thing was that we got problem. I said, I don't have problem. I want to prepare for people that are going to come. I want to carry people. Altar call now. Master asking me, and you got plenty problem. I don't have problem. It's dealt with. I'm going for altar call so that I can drink for people. So that out from me, the rivers of living waters will go on them. And I can release them. Altar call is not for problems only. Those of you who are matured, come for altar calls for impartation where you will be a vessel that God will use. He's going to pour out. you got to have that capacity. Enlarge that capacity. Hallelujah. You see, you determine, you determine, you determine how much you will receive from him. Because he's ready. Think in, in this miracle working. The widow kept on pouring and pouring. There was no problem with the oil and the jar. No problem. The water, the jar kept on pouring and pouring. But the problem was not enough vessels. She didn't get, get enough vessels. Her problem was she didn't prepare enough. This capacity is too small. He was pouring. The pour, water kept pouring and pouring. But inside there, little too much. I cannot. I got to, you're supposed to get more. You're supposed to get more. Hallelujah. This is not a message for only mothers. It's for fathers. It's for sons. It's for daughters. Not for mothers only. We've got to wake up. There's going to be a flow now. You may sit down not one. Maybe sit down long, long as you're not taught. You're going to sit down and take response. Holy Spirit by saying, you go and pastor 10. You by go pastor him Templar. You by pastor him Templar. You by pastor him Templar. you got to be fit here to take that. Take that. Hallelujah. You determine how much you will receive from him. The oil kept flowing, the miracle taking, taking place in front of her and her sons, but the oil ceased when there was no more vessel. No more vessel. See, there is no problem with God. God's part is okay. But are you ready to take it? See, one plus story blown me. When God woke up preparing me, Lord, come back, Lord, upon Now, this is a true story. Man, I realized that I was so empty. Before me come, Lord, save him, ma'am. What plan I had? Me sleep now. Me harem this lie, eating him all. Time you got this lie, empty bucket, now you go to the water tank. You open water tank now. What are you running the bucket there? Noise block. 
Tare play em. You tell me what what I say, put down you go down the bucket now. You can hear the water pouring in. You save a little bucket pull up or bucket empty. Man, for four months, I kept hearing that water pouring into me. I now realize I had that capacity. <laughs> he kept pouring and pouring. Even me come out law 1999, law ministry. I kept hearing that water keep on pouring. It kept on pouring on me for another five months before me, me, me not not. That, that sound went. He's going to pour on you his power, his spirit, his spirit. And by capsizing him inside, Louis, but are you ready, church? Are you ready when the rush is coming? <coughs> are you ready? No can sit down, sit down, you know. You make a program blowing me, your family blowing me. I know that. But where is God's program? Where is God's program? Because if we put if we put God's program first, your family program will just flow. Your family program, I'm telling you the truth. You put God first. Every one of your bills, every one of your problems will just flow in. You put God first. God first. You stay in the presence of God. God first. And fill up your heart at times of prayer. Increase your time of prayer. Increase it. Suppose you're doing one hour, I'm going two hours. If you're doing two hours, I'm going to go three hours. If I'm going three hours, I'm, no, Pastor, I've not got time. No, there is time. There is time. We use it on wandering around and walking around. You can use that time to stay in the presence of God. I mean, okay, you be by blast, not plakaina. If you listen to this message, hallelujah. Turn in Bible, I say 54. I say 54. Hallelujah. I've been preaching this all the time, and you should know it by now. The future glory of Zion. Zion is the church. Hallelujah. I'm going to start reading it from, reading it from verse 1. Topic it talk, the future glory of Zion. Sing, O barren woman, you who never bore a child, burst into song, shout for joy, you who were never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband. And then verse 2, I'm talking about enlarge, enlarge the place of your tent. This lad, ting ting blow you. Stretch. Lick, lick, ting ting blow you. You put him God in a box. Walk blow God, you put him in a box. Stretch. Stretch it. You do not buruk. These are things of God. Let me talk. Stretch. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your ca tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. Why? For you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in the desolate cities. Do not be afraid. You will not suffer shame. Ah. Church, I think we, we try and put God's programs first. What's God's program, Pastor? You know, look, I'm not church. You and God in the presence of God. Enlarge yourself. You don't have to come to the church. Suppose you got noise, noise to the house, come inside. Ring him in. I'll open the gate for you. Stay as long as you want. Hallelujah. There is no problem with God's part. The oil kept flowing. The widow had limits. Widow had a capacity problem. Inside her was not enough to receive the outpouring. Our part, are we preparing ourselves? Are you preparing yourselves? Hallelujah. You be thinking, kind, kind problem, let this place down. You be thinking, married problem, blow me. You be thinking, can I become also one him tomorrow? You be thinking, school fee, how about me buy him? You will now answer your source and God, yeah? Amen. Get to God. How will I break this addiction? This is like drinking addiction. How will I break it? Go to God. Simple as that. This gospel is so simple. We made it so complicated. It's so simple. Read it, believe it, do it. Hallelujah. I say 54, enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Hallelujah. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your text. Lengthen your cord. Of Pull him cordy long, long plan. Pass ten, ten blow lily. Pull him cordy go long plan. So many people will come inside. Post blow you. Put him wider. House post you lily too much. Make it wide so that others can come inside into you. Look at me. Jacqueline. Scully. Everybody. Everybody in the Doris. Gerald. Uh, Camillus, Nicholas, Rove, Jelevi, everybody here. I didn't mention everyone. Suppose you be one one. This is like, psh, open it wide for God. 
God, use me as a vessel. I don't care what's going to happen to me. Use me, God. Use me, God. Do something about my life, God. Take my life, Lord. I messed it up. Even though you married six times, you've been an alcohol, you've been in prison in and out, but God can still use you. God can still use you. You mama, you papa Mary, you skinny Mary, you papa, you only talk, you know God's servant. No, God doesn't look for survey. So long as this one is full, Lord, use me. Take my life and do something about it. That's my prayer. God, take my life. I'm 65. God, I'm not old yet. <laughs> take my life and do something about me. I will do what you want me to do. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll say what you want me to say. God is going to do an outpouring church. Is your capacity enough to hold it? Can you hold it? Can you hold it? Are we stretching ourselves in our prayer time? Hiya. I must have my talk to prayer. I think 1999 we come here to talk to prayer, talk to God, prayer, talk to God. Church, prayer is the key. I'm key. And when you pull him here, now you will I'm going to pray. Oh God, thank you, Lord, this morning. Thank you, Lord, sun is shining. Thank you, Lord, life, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Not only that, go further in tongues. That one, them love him, blow you yet. Yeah. Go further in tongues and pray for other people. Me, 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 finish now. Others now. Instead of me, 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 bless me, bless me, bless me. You know, give me, give me, give me. Di, 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 me, 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 me. No, forget it. It's others now. We've been in the world long enough. God is about to do an outpouring. Stretch. Stretch. Are we stretching ourselves in our prayer time? Are we spending quiet time studying and enjoying God's word? Hallelujah. Another word for anointing is dunamis. Another word for anointing is dunamis. You know what dunamis is? Dynamite. And you are holding dynamite in your hands. Dynamite. And you got explosive power. You got resurrection power inside of you. Amen. You see how powerful you are. Amen. Resurrection power and dynamite. You think of dynamite also firecracker. You bene, bene, bene. If you have no knowledge about it, and by power up now, you might die. But you got to have an anointing. You got to have a knowledge about the dynamite. You got power inside of God invested in you. So long as Holy Spirit is in you, you keep on feeding and feeding and feeding. All the problems might come melt and God's God's priority will take over and all your problems. I got plenty of problems. Look and think also me no got problems. But I put God first. I put God first. As I put God first and fix him house below me. As I put God first and sell him all Mary Kamlo. Put him put him on five problem me come here. As I put God first, my carpenter, my own son, is doing it with his heart. As I put God first, church needs a maid, met. All the church in the fence around. Cement, fencing. As I stay in God's, I got plenty needs. But I put God first. My priority in the morning, my priority at night, early morning hours when I blow me pen. Wow, God, thank you. Rehan toko siando Roman toko. Who said by passing me? Who said by passing me? You can pass a mouse below me. Hallelujah. Or Mama can pray one time. Yes, I bet I sleep one time. Love. I mean, I'm not blow catch up one time. Me. I'm older than her. She cannot catch up with me. I'm so sorry when I sit down and sleep. Hallelujah. Stretch. Stretch. So dynamis is dynamite. That's another word for anointing. You got dynamite in your hands. You got explosive power. You, you got resurrection power inside of you. And you're sitting amongst your family, amongst your people with the dynamite in your hands. Now seek around him, you me. Problem around him, you me. Now this la power is tough, you, yeah? You cannot even stretch out to say, you not me pray, you. Because you got fear. You know why? You know overflow yet, that's why. I was supposed to bring a jug for illustration, but I forgot. Your neighborhood is around you and you're doing nothing. You start praying for them to start, you start, start praying Lord, all. Start lifting them in prayer. Start interceding from all. E.M. Bounce, if you want to like intercessor, I'm talking all same. Before you go to, before you go to God, before you, before you go to God, how, what is it, Solix calling? Before you go to God and before you speak to, before you speak to God about men, you must speak to, before you speak to men about God, you must go, speak to God about men first. You must spend time in intercessory. You must pray for those people, your family around you. Okay. Are you, are you stretching in your, in your time with God's presence? 
passing the blood, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. You know, it's a waste of time. Time you walk the sort here. You must think him. You sit down, story, 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 story. Sunny walk go, 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 Hey, time here. What did I do for God? You question him, you. What did I do for God? You sit down, story, story, story. Sun up, sun up, sun up, story, story, story. He going up, have you Hey, time finish here. Okay, good. Tomorrow by me, save him you. Okay, tomorrow, okay. You look him now, I want to come. You sit down, you go, you go tomorrow. It's going to go because they will want to distract you. You go to make a commitment. No, enough. You play stop out. Don't come. Don't come. I look that gate every day. <laughs> Don't come to my house. Or if you come, Miss Silas, Lord, all around my poly suitcase now, one of them come here. No, see, poly come here. That's before time passed our life. Now, no, God. <laughs> also, I respect me. But you see, you see what I'm talking about? What is your priority? Is your priority with God or is your priority with people? Yes, yes you got good discussion to talk about, but is it going to take you until Avinoni go night? See, when, you, when we put God last, all our problems by pile up, pile up, is up. It's the truth. It's the truth. Hallelujah. Are we meditating enough on God's words? How much time are you going to God? How much time are you spending with God? How much time? Have a diary. Every time you have a diary, write him what time you spend with God. You go back to your diary and check what time did I spend with God? How much time did I spend with God? Do you want to be a vessel that God is going to use in these last days? Yes, I want to. <laughs> I want to lead the team. <laughs> White flag us, no walking stick. Straight forward. <laughs> this is it. Let's go this way. We go put down the flag and pick him up. Walk about Ken. Hallelujah. How much time are you going to spend with God? Is he priority? Do you want to be a vessel that God will use? Turn in Bible, come now, Ephesians 3.20. You please say, Lord, it's a scripture. I'm talk. My God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that I ask or imagine. Okay, listen to this. Listen to this. According to his power that is at work within you. So, Embe, come back, Lord, you can. He can do exceedingly and abundantly, but it's going to be according to the power that's working inside of you. You see, God in a long, long, he's going back to you again. You've got to have that time of stretching. You've got to stretch. It's a good stretch. Hallelujah. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. Me like encourage you play this in the morning. Prepare yourselves. Capitalize on what God is already going to give to us. We've got to capitalize on it. Hallelujah. Set time aside just for you and God. Don't allow people to steal that time. People will steal your time. They can steal that time. That's why me play our widow, me play mama stereta. Me play single mama. We are happy. Because we got all that time. Me plan not pleasing man, but me plan. No more. <laughs> <laughs> don't think that I'm getting married. I'm not getting married. I'm enjoying God. <laughs> you see, here, yeah, let me talk also. Thank you, God. Set time aside just for you and God. Don't allow people to steal that time. Okay, I'm going to come to the board. It's interesting now. I need that little microphone. Hallelujah. I found out just to help you. Look, by you. I did a research on all this. This let me prepare him now. Okay. I got on the board here for you. Lord, make him you play. Hungary law anointing. This is the thing that's gonna make you break loose. Okay. When the anointing is present in your life, the evil things your enemies will plan for you will end up coming upon them instead. You look him, it's gonna work for you. So evil people, they're gonna plan trap against you. But when you are anointed, when anointing is upon your life, those trap by turning go to can. Example, Mordecai. Mordecai na Haman. Haman, Haman he walk in this like big pla. What do you call it? Galo. And by hang up Mordecai long end. Now, any more get something, I'm going to gossip backside. Lo Haman, Mordecai, and talk. You will by make him now. This is happy. I'm here by hang him up long end. Because Mordecai is a man of prayer and fasting. That thing turned around. Haman yet only, only 
Because of the anointing. Okay. The other thing, anointing also brings with it a change of status. Status, recognition, nation changes like Saul. Your status will change. Instead of uh, this is a strong widow, yeah? no, become a blessed mother. <laughs> a blessed widow. Okay? The other thing, Mordecai and Esther, their promotion came as a result of, of the anointing. They were willing to pay the price, and the price is fasting and praying. And that's something that you must make him. You keep on praying and fasting, praying and fasting. You know what? That anointing will come on you. Okay? <clears throat> anointing produces results. You win all the time. You will win all the time. And you will, you will progress and you will move forward. That's anointing on your life. I, you hungry or you want to stay like this again next year? Who wants to stay like this again next year? No, enough is enough. We're going to break that yoke. Enough is enough. You see, when you, when you pray and fast, you are making an exchange. His anointing comes on you, your weakness goes to God. You're doing an exchange. You hook, hook onto the power and source that never runs dry. A power and source that never runs dry. It brings you guaranteed victory. Okay, 2 Kings chapter 6. The Platonic Bible. Second, this is a very interesting one. This is what the anointing does. 2 Kings chapter 6. Ah, 2 Kings chapter 6. Bible look him. I did some research over the weekend. 2 Kings chapter 6. Okay, by look him. Verse 1. An ex head floats. Bible look him. This is the story. 2 Kings chapter 6, starting from verse 1. Topic belong and talk, and X head floats. Okay, let me read him. The company of the prophets said to Elisha, Look, the place where we meet with you is too small for us. Let us go to Jordan, where each of us can get a pole, and let us build a place there for us to live. And he said, Go. Then one of them said, Won't you please come with, come with your servants? I will, Elisha, Elisha replied. And he went with them. So the anointed man is going with them. Listen to this very carefully. A man who has the mantle on him is going with them now. So Emi Tokol said, They went to Jordan and they began to cut down trees. As one of them was cutting, cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. Think of this like hand blow, handle blow, tamiok, na head blow tamiok. Okay, tamiok yet, uh, this is like iron head fell down into the water. Listen to this. Hallelujah. The iron X head fell into the water. The, oh my Lord, he cried out. It was borrowed. I know something blow me. Me borrow him here. And the man of God asked, listen to this, anointing now. Elisha asked, where did it fall? When he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick and he threw it there and he made the iron float. Iron is not supposed to float, but iron floated. He cut the stick and he said, where did it go? He said, down there. And, and get up, cut him stick and put him, he go down there. X head floated. Iron doesn't float. But in this case, the anointing made it float because it was borrowed. And you know what? He retrieved this. Hallelujah. You see how power of God is working. And the, oh, my Lord cried out. It was borrowed. The man of God asked, where did it fall? When he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick and threw it there and made the iron float. Lift it out, he said. Then the man reached out his hand and he took it. That's the God I serve. Yeah. It's like God, Mr. Kalap Kalap long in there. Mr. Boast long in there. When he married, blow me May he restore him life, blow me one time all begin there. That's the God I serve. Hallelujah. Okay, next one. I got another one here. Second Kings chapter 6, verse 8 to 12. Chapter 6, verse 8 to 12. Hallelujah. Elisha traps blinded Arameans. Listen to this. Now the king of Aram was at war with Israel. This is very, very interesting. After conferring with his officers, he said, I will set up my camp in such and such a place. This is like King Aram Muklotok, wicked king. The man of God sent word to the king of Israel and he told them, beware of passing that that place because the Arameans are come, going down there. 
Verse 10. So the king of Israel checked on the place indicated by the men of God. Time and time again, Elisha warned the king so that he was on his guard in such places. This enraged the king of Aram, and he summoned his officers and demanded of them, Will you not tell me which of us is on the other side of the king of Israel? Now, verse 12 also calls him, None of us, my lord the king, said one of his soldiers. But Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. The words that this, la, this la, uh, wicked king I've got a plane blown in against the Israel people. And we walk a plane inside the bedroom blown in. Elisha was listening to it in Israel. So all the gossip in the one plan outside, you can hear it there. And you can, you can bout him, make him all confused. They were trying to set traps to catch them, but they couldn't. Now King Kirab Neto calls them. Usat lo yumi walk lo go lo side blown all the talking. No God. Elisha, this like man of God, is listening to your conversation in his bedroom. Your conversation is secret in that in his bedroom, but Elisha in Israel is listening to your conversation. That's the anointing. You see what privileges we have? We have that privilege. <laughs> we can trap things down. This is good for police, police people. You know, time police go, we did this to late Peter, uh, not late Peter, Peter Mamiya. Peter Mami Golo, Buka. Long one plow, something low up here. Me to plow pastor pray long and open. I long and he open where by pining all is like criminals. You know, he took that prayer when he went. He could find them anywhere. They were hiding, but them go now. Come out, him on. Come out, him on. It works for police. It works for anybody. Hallelujah. So I wrote in here. Elisha couldn't hear. Elisha could hear every evil plan King Aram made against Israel. Elisha had the very words spoken in the bedroom of the king Aram. Secret words spoken in the bedroom. Men of God can hear it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Turn in Bible, come now. 2 Kings 2, 23 to 25. 2 Kings chapter 2. 23 to 25. Elisha is jeered. This is where me put him low here. When you are touching the anointing. Okay, listen. 23 to 25. Where is it? Let me talk. From there, Elisha went up to Bethel. As he was walking along the road, some youths came out of the town and they jeered him. They were teasing him. Go on up, you bald head. They said, go on up, you bald head. He turned around, looked at them, and he called down a curse on them in the name of the Lord. That two, then two bears came out of the woods and they molded 42 of the youths and he went on to Mount Camel and from there returned to Samaria. 42 young people were playing around with this man of God. Out of bald head, you kill a bomb bomb. <laughs> you kill a bomb bomb. He turned around, he kissed them. Same time, bear came out and kill him all. 42 of them. That's where we miss the talk of them. Don't touch the anointing. Oh. Very, very important. Don't touch it. Because it can kill you. 2 Kings 2, 19 to 22. 2 Kings 2, 19 to 22. Healing of the water. The men of the city said to Elisha, Look, our Lord, this town is well situated, as you can see, but the water is bad and the land is unproductive. Bring me a new bowl, he said, and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went out to the spring and he threw the salt into it, saying, This is what the Lord says. I have healed this water. Never again will it cause death or make the land unproductive. And the water has remained wholesome to this day, according to the word of Elisha, where Elisha has spoken. So looking water where he poisoned, it became healed. Second wow. Kings 13 to 13, verse 20 to 20. 21. Hallelujah. Let's look at it. 13, verse 20 to 21. Missy Krabin Bell Blue Prayer. Missy Krabin Bell Blue Prayer. You go for this anointing. Hallelujah. Okay. Verse 20. Let me talk about Sam. Elisha died. Elisha is the man that asked for double portion. Huh? You see how the double portion is working now? Hallelujah. 
Joel put the phone down. Elisha died and was buried. Now Moabite raiders, look him, Moabite raiders used to enter the country every spring. Once while some Israelites were burying a man, suddenly they saw a band of raiders. So they threw the man's body into Elisha's tomb. When the body touched Elisha's bones, the man came to life and stood up on his hill. <laughs> this is the man that asked for double potion. Now only buried him, I think two months ago. They buried him. Now money mo clock him na afla body come na same time. All look him all enemy blong all come now. All he put it now all kiss him body ya. All suit long and go lo tomb lo Elisha. And when they threw the body in the tomb, that body came alive. That's the anointing. See the Christians, our Christian uh, uh, time. All mama baking cake. The final part of that cake is cream. Must get icing on the cake. Because you can get nothing without the icing. You know, sweet. Final part of Christianity is we must get the anointing. Amen. You must get the anointing. Each one of us are anointed. But the measure inside of you, praying and fasting is going to increase it. Praying and fasting and the word of God, confession of the word, meditation of the word is going to increase that anointing. So time we increase him. These things happen to them only show him because we can do it too. We, you can have a conversation in Australia. <laughs> you can have You know, nothing is hidden. Me talking with nothing is hidden. <clears throat> Hallelujah. The anointing is not only for pastors. Anointing is not only for pastors. It's also for the whole body of Christ. Okay, it's for everybody. Anointing will affect your character. It will affect your attitude, your words, your volume of your voice. It will give you wisdom for everyday life. That's the anointing. So look him. I'm going to go back to this. Lie. Read Ken. Go by me. Hallelujah. You may go back Ken. Lord. This is Second Kings 4, 1 to 7. Man, the presence of God is not, not like in here. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 7. The wife of a noble man, wife of a man from the company of the prophets, cried out to Elisha, your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that he revered the Lord, but now his creator is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. I believe Elisha was, Elisha expected him to go into prayer. But because the capacity belonged in her she cannot pray for herself. Okay, one of the things that the Holy Spirit showed me was, maybe some of the time we are not in the overflow. We are not walking in overflow. You think him? I was supposed to bring my jug, but I didn't. When you are overflowing, and we, when you are getting a jug full, you are pouring into a, another empty jug. That jug must overflow. When God is pouring into our life, is outpouring. We are supposed to be overflowing. We overflow meaning blowing. Cup side, pull up, and the cup side, you go down. You go in up, you go out of side, them cup side. So you walk about there and water, anointing stuff. Wow. <laughs> and that's the reason why Peter walk about there. Shadow blowing and touch him on man on the hill. Hey. Every touch him and get you if only go now, only money, kiss him and get you if only go pray, Lord, sick man healed. Because they were on the outpouring, overflow. I think, I believe the whole problem here is we've got to continue what we are doing and overflow. And when you are in the overflow, you know what? No God pour it, blow you. No God pour it, blow you. There's boldness on you. You know, not thinking, I am me pray long and by by die or no good by come back, by die or by sick all get that. No, you won't have that because it's God. It's not you. <laughs> Everything is God's decision. You just do your part by praying for them. If they die, they die. Last time, Philip came not talking to me. One little little monkey, belt long and solar, body long and solar. He came to pray at our side. Now, me pray and tap long end, but me pili mol sem, and me shut. So I just prayed. I prayed for him. I released the anointing on him. Next, I think about two, three weeks later, Philip come and talk, Pastor, this little boy, you pray long end, and me die. Me talk, and me right. And we'll block God. Everything is in God's hands. You know me pray now, and me die. No. <laughs> it's God's will. Who's going to live and who's going to go? You see? So, Emmy, you, you, we cannot get the blame. So, one thing that Holy Spirit showed me during this preparation was we got to walk in the overflow. One per time, me go to altar call. This is a true story about me. Me go to altar call, night service, night service, and soaking time. All talk soaking time. Soaking meaning long and allow the Holy Spirit to just fill you up. So, me plug all the uh, night, night service, me plug up prayer. Me go outside the altar call. Now, all the time, when the altar call, me first marry. 
<laughs> also gossip about me. Many are plenty problem. Long and that is not problem. I want to fill up for people. So me go aside now. Me put him hand me. Pastor me can pray This is a face covering. Em can pray lo me. Top la papa lo backside ya. Only like catching me. No God only like catching me. Only drunk. <laughs> all spark no go through. Presence no God. Only kill Joyce. You are leaking. You are leaking everywhere. <laughs> Instead of me put down and go down the presence of God, only put down and go down the presence of God. I was so full and overflowing. Church, I want you to do that. Yeah. It's a must. Put God priority. You may sit down, sit down, story, 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 good night. They wasted. Did I save God? You think him? Suppose you go on top of the pastor. Every cemetery, you go to the cemetery. Also, I put him also. Um, no, pastor, when was that born? 1952. First time I put him, 1952 to 2014. <clears throat> 1952-2014. You know what the dash means? Between the time of your life you were born, now die blow you. What have you done for God? That dash. That's my revelation. God convicted me on that. The day pastor was born was 1952, and then Mipla put him dash, and the beginning finished long end, 2014. That dash means, what have you done for God? What have you done for God? You get up in the morning, God, how may I save you? How may I save you? Is there anybody you want me to save? Maybe me give him one little one single long end. Or maybe yeah, Miss Karen, let me go put him arm around her to comfort her. Or maybe cook him one like I can give me go long end. Or one plan, sorry, Trungu Mama, he come here, I'll bless her. Or, or I'll go and pray for somebody. God, how may I save you? You may sit down, sit down, sit down. People are dying around us. There are people around us with problems. All by laugh, all by, all by smile on you, but inside of them, they are breaking. But if you have that x-ray vision, you can look, look, go inside, neighbor like, talk. She's pretending. Something not right with her. Can I pray for you? Amen. Reach out. Start reaching out. Something inside, no, you may go away. It's there for you to start practicing. As you keep on giving it out, it will increase. You step out, it will increase. You only pass him, it will not increase. Now it's good to start with your family. Me to play pastor, started with our children. Leg blown, only soul up, only sick. We laid hands on them. And from then, I'm like, practice, practice, go. We knew how the feeling is. We went outside. So me encourage you, play. maybe go to the overflow. Build yourself up to the overflow. Once you overflow now, hard loss stopping you. Hard loss stopping you. You have the wisdom. You carry the wisdom. You carry the insight. You carry the understanding. Everything is stuck inside the anointing. It's all in there. Start, start serving God. Start stepping out. And what, what have you got in you? You see, there, one of the things why you look at my people are, people are preaching the gospel with passion. Hard loss stopping all day. Flying by plane. Especially all covering them. They are flying by jets. Going from nation to nation. From, from a state to state, they're flying because God touched their lives. God touched their lives. Yesterday, Jerry Salem one pla message came to me, Mary Blood, Jerry Savel. Jerry Savel was preaching and he was talking about First John chapter 5 something. Huh? Yeah. He, but my God will provide me. And you know what she did? Man Blongen, he preached stuff. I'm going to tag him. Fight him, Boros, Man Blongen. Meaning belong in, it's a tag team. Give it to me, I'm going to speak the testimony. She took the microphone from her husband and she got up and she preached her testimony. Connecting with what her husband was saying. And we get up and I talk also. That scripture, first, uh, Philippians 4, 19, is the one that provided our needs. I'm talk, we, were, we had no money. We had no food. And I was collecting Coke bottles to go and sell it for five cents so that I can buy food for my children. They went through that. They went through poverty. Jerry Savell, his car, no good car. Emmy Ronnie go car by flat. They used to pray so the car can start. No car, nothing. They were so poor. Mary Blong and Savoka, about one of them, she Blong and got hole in them. And they started poverty in the beginning. But then now, God blessed them. And with what God did to them, God healed them. They cannot stop preaching the gospel now. Why? Something happened in their life. That's what's happening to me. I was nothing. I was a shy woman. I was very, very jealous. I was full of unforgiveness and bitterness and anger and hatred. But when God touched my life, I said, I'm going to spread it. Something happened in here where I'm not going to, I don't care if they don't allow women to preach in Papua New Guinea. I'm going because I got something in me to give to them. 
See, when people are preaching, they're flying all over the world to preach the gospel. God touched their lives. Jerry Seven's wife was collecting Coke bottles. You know, say, pick him a Coke bottle or sell him. She was collecting Coke bottles for five cents in America. She can sell and feed her children. That's a testimony. I'll show it to you on Friday. She was selling them for, for testimony to feed their children. And when God changed their life, now they're so rich. And people are criticizing them because they're rich. Who made them rich? God. God made them rich. And see, that's turn around. You don't see yourself. That's a pastor. He told them, I'm looking at my joy in my suffering. Don't look at your suffering now. Look at what's ahead of you. What you're going through now, look at what's going to happen. Like with Pastor Amy Day, yeah, I, I, I grieve for him for a while. But after that, you lose him all together. Heavy on top of burden from me. Me talk, you lose me without taking responsibilities. Me kick him all flower about him. God talks him. What are you doing? I anointed you. You can do it now. You can take it to the next level. What he left and see what happened. We came to another level. We are going on YouTube. We are going on radio program. We are going on everything. We took the church to another level, and I was blaming Pastor for it. No, God said you don't have to kick his mat mat. <laughs> You don't have to kick his flowers around. Go and collect him flowers. I'm sorry. <laughs> See, church, the reason why we are so passionate about the gospel is because it did something for us. We were living in poverty. We couldn't afford. Me by me going inside the cupboard, all drop, me by me open drawer. Kiss him all the one toy today. The ten pennies were there. One toy today. Me collect him, collect him ten dollars. Go buy him tin fish. Go buy him anything. Flour. Yes, flour will run long. Tin fish in Australia is only 90 cents. Bread is 90, uh, nine, 90 cents. Chicken wings, one, one kilo is $1.99. So at least I can gather $10 from pennies. I can go and buy it. It'll take me two weeks until mixing pay. I don't do that anymore. I don't do that anymore. I'm helping so many people. I'm blessing the church. I'm blessing my children. Michael and M work money with commission. I'm still supplying for her. I'm still supplying Vanessa. See, I'm paying for people's tickets. They're still flying around with my little money. See, God took me from nothing. Come on, tablo, this level. I can help people where I didn't help before. Me encourage you, Pla. The moment God takes you from nothing to somebody, you must think in God. You must think in God. But it's the anointing that does that. Press up now, me pray. Me talk talking up now. <laughs>